Hello, everyone. This is video five of six. We are nearing the end of our sessions with Suzanne Northrup and Cheryl Murphy. So these are mediums that did a gallery reading, a Zoom event that I paid for a ticket and attended. They didn't know I was there. I don't know why. But anyway, so it was a Zoom event, 35 people, mostly all women. It happened in December, mid-December 2023. I'm recording this on Christmas Eve, December 24th. There are six videos. I find these very uh, interesting to look at in a chunk like this over a period of time. You can look at whatever video you want in whatever order you want. The first video has the most content on it explaining how this happened and, and so on. There are playlists of Suzanne Northrup and there are playlists of Cheryl Murphy on this channel, Psychics Explained. And there are articles that I've written about them for Skeptical Inquire, and they will be in the description of these videos. This The Cheryl Murphy one has not come out yet. This is December 24th, 2023. As soon as it's released, which should be any day now, we'll put I'll put that in the description here if you want to learn more about her and find out more about her readings. So far, everything I have seen is typical of her past readings she's done when she was assisting with uh, Thomas John. Apparently she's a um, trained with him or under him or whatever it is it's called. She does not hot read. This is pure cold reading and it's not very good cold reading. Uh, we're going to be watching today Tracy, who's getting a reading with Cheryl. And this this reading of all the readings is the most personal. And it is a reading that if you're if you're if you're uh, not comfortable with watching something where a woman who's in deep deep grief, this woman is in um I guess the they would call this uh, deep grief, I think it's what it's called in the in the therapy world. We've talked to a few therapists, uh, grief counselors, who are licensed grief counselors, not like these mediums who are pretend uh, grief therapists with no licensing and no training. We've talked to them in the past, and maybe you'll understand this. Uh, there are Grief is 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 a mother, okay? It is awful, horrible, horrible, horrible. But there needs to be a way of moving through grief. Apparently, there are stages of grief, and there are ways to minimize it, to make it less, um, I don't know, I guess painful, or uh, give you the ability to go on and move through your life and have happy times, celebrate, uh, learn to remember the person, but not in a way that is unhealthy where you aren't um, able to move on with your life. Uh, some people, you now grief is like people move through grief at, at their own paces, obviously, and there's all kinds of different kinds of grief. But to sometimes there are people who are in grief for a long period of time and they are unable to um at all move they they can't give away anything they um everything's kept in the same place it was before they have um obsessive thoughts constantly about the person um, and they're unable to like celebrate holidays and um form new relationships or move out of the place that they were in or to you know, change change things because that's the way it was when that person they loved was there um, I know of some people who years and years and years have never changed anything in the bedroom where a person has died it's exactly the same as it was from the day that they found them there and they had had um, passed on and they enter the room and maybe to dust and they can't move anything and that is that is a different kind of grief that is um, all encompassing. It'll eat you up and it's it's awful and ugly, but there are ways of dealing with this. And if you find yourself in that kind of position where, where somebody you love is going through that, 
the, they probably need to see somebody who's a licensed, trained grief counselor. Also, from what I understand, is grief counselors are try to wean you off of themselves. So it's only a, a set amount of time, maybe four sessions or something, where they they talk about and they try to get a way of allowing you, uh, finding the best fit for you to move through the grief to a point where you're able to, um, like I say, enjoy life again and move on. Of course, not give everything away and not forget your person. None of that, of course not. But to make it so that you're you're living your best life. Okay. So this woman you're going to see, her name is Tracy. Um, she, I don't know, I can't diagnose anybody. I'm not a grief counselor and I'm not a therapist. Neither are these psychic mediums. But from what I understand, it appears that this woman is probably going through this, um, is in this cycle of extreme grief. Now, I'm not quite clear how long her husband has died, but it it's recent, but it's not so recent. So, um, you know, maybe she'll be okay. She'll get through this all right. But from all the years I've been doing this, I think that when you, this is not healthy to have a, a grief, you know, have a medium just uh, giving you platitudes and, and so on. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. So this is um, Cheryl Murphy, who is going to be giving this reading to somebody named Tracy. Um, you probably want to take notes. Um, it's easier if you do, because it gets to be kind of hard to remember what actually was covered and what wasn't. And, and to pay attention with just staring at the screen and watching better if you take some notes you can of course rewind and go back and rewind can you rewind videos oh that sounds very vhs huh? if you back up the video you'll be able to re-listen if you want to but as i said this is a harder one um to deal with but this is video five of six so um let, let's get through this message um Uh, so guys, I have, I have someone here with me and they're telling me that you have their tattoo or you have a tattoo and I feel like it's a name, it, it, you know, it's a phrase, it's lettering right here. I do feel it to be a male. So can anyone understand that having a tattoo right here in their honor? Me. I, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi. I just got it done too. Mm, I just want to see you. It says, oh, yes, always and forever, Dave and Tracy. Oh, how lovely. Um, and um, Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I well, I definitely saw uh, writing and the name and or, or lettering, you know, uh, mm -hmm. could be a phrase. So you did a lot there. Always. Is, and would you understand this to be a soulmate, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. And would you understand, like, I keep hearing the word forever, forever, yep. like. And it does feel like a recent passing or it's hard to celebrate without me. Recent. And um, very difficult to let go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even still sleeping with clothing in this way, you understand? Yeah. And pillows and smelling their essence so to speak yeah you have a dog walking mm -hmm. the dog something about walking the dog by yourself or mm -hmm. walking the dog you know you understand that and um turning the lights on in your house because it's been pretty dark in there is what i'm hearing do you understand and um difficult to even walk i mean this is what happens right we have difficulty just getting off the couch or off we have difficulty and breathing and breathing and finding a purpose to live. But you have this, I know you're going to get through this is what I'm hearing. And um, it, might be, it might be me. Oh, is there someone else talking? I'm sorry if I interrupt. Let me know if there's someone else talking, okay? Uh, I just keep hearing love of your life. 
and uh, cooking together. Together, I want to eat a bunch of food. Yeah. Thank you. And if you could just mute whoever, um, please. Um, um, and um, we used to celebrate life, Cheryl. We used to celebrate life. Now, is there an anniversary coming up, Tracy, that I'm supposed to know about? Her birthdays are coming up. Birthdays are coming up. And I, I I feel January, but then I also felt February and that I wanted to go right into Valentine's Day feeling. Uh, anniversary. When we first got together, it was in January, like 38 years ago. 39 years ago. Okay. Never prepared for this is what I'm hearing. Not prepared. You know, Cheryl, we're never prepared for this. And... Um, we had so many plans. We had so many plans. And um, I don't know if you found the ring. Did you find a ring or something? Or do you have a particular ring that is important for you? Or you found the ring? It's something like finding. I was, I lost, remember, we lost the wedding ring and we found it. Oh, lovely. And uh, I mean, I, I just feel shirt ties or like, he, you know, like life's a mess, right? Life's is a mess right now, you know, like, uh, and um, you are really in a, you know, in an adjustment phase, like don't ever expect to be doing anything other than what you're doing. All right. This is the support I feeling from your love and the heart. What a strong heartbeat. Uh, what a strong heartbeat between the two of you. Was there a tattoo on the chest too? Can I go there? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> His fingerprint, his handwriting from a letter he wrote me, it said, all my love. Uh -huh. hey. mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's something about walking in his shoes and you have his shoes, but I'm sure you have a lot of things right now, but you do have his shoes. It's about you act literally like walking in his shoes or almost yeah, walk. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing everything. He took care of me and I'm yeah. learning. Football. Yeah, and it's I like... Go ahead, please. I, I will not get rid of his shoes They're under the bed. It's like walking. It's like taking, uh, retracing the steps is another way of kind of saying it. Like dancing. Oh my God, you guys have so much love between the two of you. I want to dance. I want to dance in the bedroom. I want to dance. I want to move the furniture out of the way. You know how we move the bed out of the way or you hit the bed when you're dancing. You know, it's like, you know, when you're having fun, you know, everything else is in the way, you know? Yeah. Us. And he would have a tattoo also. Do you understand that? He would have a tattoo because he goes, you know, it's just us. It's just us. You know, it, that's what life is about. Like when I first met you, he says, you know, that soulmate, it's just us. Um, that's what he, I don't, mm -hmm. Please. He say, you and you, you and me, babe, we don't yeah. need nobody else. You that's and me. Right. That's right. Now, I don't know if he lost weight or why he's showing me all these belts or loose pants. You understand yeah. baggy pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you have his ashes. Is that right? You have his ashes? No, he was, he was buried. He was buried. Okay. Very, very fair enough. Uh, because he was taking me to the baggy clothes. We went into, and he's like, I don't really want to talk about that. I don't. And so that's how I kind of, I kept going there. So I, let me just go back where he wants me to go here. And um pictures and picture frames and photo albums I almost feel like more tattoos with his picture added I don't know you know how people do their face on the it's like a pictures of tattoos of his face and just more pictures and um you guys had it all I do want to say you had enough he's like enough we had enough we had enough yes. I want to tell you that he comes to you through songs <laughs> Okay. And I feel like your phone rings all the time. I don't know, like your phone rings all the time. Like, um, I don't know what this is. Do you still have his voice, please, on the voicemail? Or it's like you still have him. No, I, I still have his phone. His phone. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I don't like go his home. He's a very strong man. He wants you to know. Very know. strong. He's telling He's me. Very brave. Very brave is a good word. He's like, Cheryl, I'm a strong guy. Just to tell you, like he, he wants to arm wrestle, you know, like I'm strong. I, um, 
you know, of course, didn't mean for this to happen. I wanted to hang out as long as I could. I, uh, I think he just jumped through hoops to live, you know, and, um, I, I, I feel like if you haven't already had a dream about him, you're going to have a dream about him. Have you had one yet, Tracy? Cause he says, you know, it's remarkable over here. Yeah. He comes in my dreams. There's lots of friends and families over here and he's waiting to, is there someone named Max or an MA name or a Marlene or an MA? M A Max Marlene, you may think of it later, is over oh. there also. He the also, problem. pardon me? Well, when he died, he called Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Is yeah, Margaret an aunt, like one of his aunts? Okay. Uh, I don't know. He says it's like he's all. He's all buttoned up in a suit and tie for you because he wants to present himself very well to you, very nicely to you. It's it's almost, and he wants to give you white roses. So if you understand getting roses or white roses, I'm getting white flowers. I feel like he always brought you flowers in this way. He's saying, I always brought her flowers, Cheryl. And um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I d- I don't know where I am at the moment. Let me just stay with him because he went right to the flowers and he wants you to know that um, he's still living for you. You know, he's still living for you, meaning that um, your life is not over, you know, that he's still planning a part. I don't know if you are connected to Mexico or Acapulco or something like that. I don't know if that was a destination for you guys or that's somewhere where you planned. I wanted to go see the clear clue, the clear blue water. Okay. And we're talking about Kelly, my, my cousin, mm-hmm. his cousin. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, um, uh, you know, he talks about you wearing his earrings that he gave you, you know, and I'm sure he gave you a lot of things, but it's as if when you, when you want to present yourself in a special way, you wear things, of course, that he gave you. Look, he was happy to make a mark on this world. And he says, uh, he wouldn't have been anywhere in this lifetime without you. Like he wouldn't have made it this far without you. So thank you very much for really looking out for him because you were his advocate or his overseer. You were the boss man. You were the, you know, you were the one who had the reins for a while and he's completely trusted you, you know? So I do want to just leave you with this message of a heart to heart connection with this man. I mean, if there was ever a, a soulmate and also dolphins, I don't know if you connect with dolphins or dolphin energy, but if you do, when you are say, when you go on this trip to see the blue waters, would you please look for the dolphins? Cause I do feel that to be a sign from him. Okay. Okay. I'm just hearing all my love. Thank you. All my love. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. And I will um, hand it over to Suzanne now. Okay. Okay. That is quite painful. Wasn't it? Oh, take a deep breath. So um, you can see, I think over her shoulder, you can see a picture of her husband up there. And um, I'm, gosh, I'm not quite clear how long has it been since he's died. Maybe somebody could put in the notes for me so I don't have to listen to this again. Has it been in the last few months or has it been in the last couple of years? Or I'm, I'm not quite sure. So let me know what you think. I, I really want to see what your comments are. Put them in the put them in the comment section here under this video. Do you agree with me that this woman is in um is experiencing grief in a very um in in an unhealthy it appears to be in an unhealthy way um that possibly some counseling would be better for her than having this person, Cheryl, who's just going to give her all a bunch of nonsense and platitudes that she's clinging to, Tracy's clinging to. So something about a ring, found a ring. We found it. It was a wedding ring. Okay. Well, about that ring. People are unlikely to throw away rings. And when you say that you misplaced a wedding ring, does that mean you 
misplaced it for a day or you just couldn't remember where you put it and you had to go look through the drawer and you finally found it or was it really lost or did it fall into the drain and you had to go through and get a plumber to come out what does that mean to have found it you'd lost it and you found it again is it significant enough to apply to um when cheryl says you found a ring of significance okay well i guess to the person who's a motivated sitter the person who badly needs this to be true to be badly in contact with her dead husband, whom is never named, by the way. Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, so she uses the word soulmate, which um, is kind of a keyword for you will never, ever love again kind of thing. And she talks about how long she was with her husband and the tattoo. So she shows her the tattoo. Was that her? Or am I getting it mixed up? No, the other one was a tattoo. What was this one? Yeah, she has a tattoo. This is the one that has a tattoo. And then when she goes later to the tattoo on the chest, um, now, Cheryl, how did she know? Well, she probably could just see that there was a tattoo on the chest, or it's likely if you have a tattoo there, you probably have tattoos elsewhere. Um, the tattoo on his chest with her husband's fingerprints that were on a card that was left, that's... Wow, that's way out there. Okay, I guess that's a thing. Walking in his shoes. So something about his shoes. So Cheryl says walking in his shoes. And I don't literally think that she means she was putting the shoes on and walking around the house. So Tracy finds a way of making that fit. And Tracy says it's that it's her way of saying that she's now having to take responsibility and do all those things that he did. And now she's doing them. And so she's walking in his shoes. So I guess if he mowed the lawn and took care of all the lawn care, or he handled all the bills, or he um, dealt with family members, and now she's having to walk in his shoes and do that lawn care and deal with the family members and handle the bills. So she saw it in a different way. But Cheryl starts talking about shoes. And Cheryl's got this thing for shoes. Didn't Isn't she the one that was talking about shoestrings? That she saw shoestrings and 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 the the and the person's mother was saying something about her buying new shoes. Okay. So Tracy starts talking about how she can't get rid of his shoes. They're under the bed. Um, and you feel like there's a lot of things she is not getting rid of. Shoes under the bed, okay. Um, that could be just innocent and, and fine. But um, if it's at a point where you're not able to get rid of anything um, and it's been some time, well, that's that's harder. Dancing, so much love. And he had tattoos. Well, she's got tattoos. He's probably got tattoos. It's It's not an unusual thing. Cheryl never does say what the tattoos are. Does he have something on him? Did he have a tattoo that said mom or did it say Harley Davidson or did it say, um, you know, was it a Disney cartoon? Or We don't know because she never says. Again, he's unnamed. We never hear his name. And he lost a lot of weight, which makes sense if it's somebody who has been really ill um, and they died and there's a lot of late weight loss. Okay, that makes sense. Again, Cheryl's probably done a thousand or more readings. So she knows the the methods of death. They really harp on death and these mediums. And so she she knows that somebody who's dying of cancer or something of the sort is probably going to lose a lot of weight. Now, let's just say that it didn't hit that this weight loss thing and um, seeing different sizes of the belts, the getting smaller and smaller with the different holes on it. Let's say they didn't hit. Let's say her husband did not lose a bunch of weight right before he died. Well, then Cheryl would just say, well, now in heaven, he's he's lost a lot of weight and he's he's joking about it. He's having a good laugh about how his belt, he just keeps taking it up a notch. So that's how the medium would get out of that because mediums, they're not going to be wrong. They're going to find a way of making it fit. And it's pretty flippant, you know, do do you really wear a belt? You still need to wear a belt on the other side in heaven. I sure as hell don't want to be wearing bras and 
all that stuff and oh you're always having to fix your bra and stuff oh come on let's let's make it so that heaven's a little nicer than that so she said do you have you have his ashes right and she says no we buried him and the way she she answers that is of course she can't be wrong wrong so cheryl says oh yeah that's that's what did she say that's a writer that's um like no big deal okay yeah moving on let's just move on past that thing i got wrong pictures and frames and albums so lots of pictures and frames of albums we had enough so we were we were soulmates and we did everything together so don't don't be sad about it i guess he comes to you through songs and boy she really almost lost it at that point uh this is a trope that's common with psychics that are cold reading to say songs, coins, feathers, flowers, and so on. He he sends you flowers, he sends you coins, he sends you feathers. It's all a trope. Um, comes to you through songs. So to a couple who've been together over 30 years, there are songs that you guys have listened to together, that you've grown up with, that you uh, have sung together that that are part of your world the certain genre of music of course that are around all of us and so if you're at a parking you know you're driving along and you stop at a signal and the car next to you stops and they've got their music on as playing a radio or whatever and you hear it is that him speaking to you with the song if it's a song that you remember and you have good feelings about. So did, was a different song on? And then right when he got up to the point where he's parked at the red light with you, the radio changes to the song that is appropriate because her dead husband sent it over or is the person in the car hearing the same song or is he influencing the DJ to put the song? I mean, okay, this is getting silly, but it is silly. Because he's speaking to you through songs. Songs are emotional. A lot of them are emotional songs, you know, with um, I miss you and I love you and we're soulmates and, and great memories and things like that. They invoke emotions in us. That's, that's normal. That's how songs are written in a lot of ways of making us um, feel emotion and feel something when we hear the song. So for him to speak to you through songs, I mean... We, we've we all kind of done that, haven't we? When you're in a very blue mood, um, something bad has happened to you in your life and you hear a song and it resonates with you. Or maybe when you're in a happy mood and everything's going great and you hear a song that's really upbeat and makes you feel amazing and you just want to jump around and, and, and twirl, that resonates with you too. So um, it just hit a... a it hit her just a certain way whenever she said that, because as I said, this woman is in uh, extreme grief. Your phone rings. Well, phones ring and most time it's spam, which all marketers, but she didn't buy that. She went, she goes, Oh, I have his phone. Okay. Well, of course he has his phone. It's, why not? It's very common for people to have kept their voices of their loved ones who have left a voicemail saying, Hey, I'm on my way home. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, put, put the lasagna in the oven and I'll have it when I get home, you know, or whatever they have said some commonplace message. It's just on your voice recorder and, and people don't want to erase it because of course they want to hear the voice, especially speaking something so common and, and typical. Um, you have a dream about him. Well, no kidding. I, I'd be, I would be shocked if this woman hasn't had a dream about him every day. It, she's in serious, serious grief. So we all have dreams about people and dreams about work and dreams about places and whatever. Okay. As I was listening to this, I don't know about you, but I was thinking Cheryl's playing up this life with this guy so much that I would be worried that Tracy's not going to make an early exit so she can get over to heaven to see her husband and to be with him 
um, it it was getting leaning towards that where um, I know she comes back later and she says, oh, he still has plans for you in the living. Um, but it did seem like she was really emphasizing that this is the guy of your life. He's following you around. He loves you so much. You were soulmates and this is it. This is the guy for you. And that made me suspicious that that he was feeling that way. Now, I'm sure Cheryl didn't mean to do that, but it was so over the top feeling that get to heaven because this guy's waiting for you and he wants you and he loves you and you'll be dancing again and there'll be flowers, white roses. This thing about Max, M.A. or Marlene that she was saying that the name come through, that was really odd. It didn't resonate with Tracy, except that she said when he died, he said, Margaret. Well, who's Margaret? And she says his aunt. So was it clear to you that the aunt had died or wasn't died? Was she there? I don't know. And was she sure he said Margaret? Because that's kind of a, could have come out some garbled way. And why would he be saying the name of some other woman when his wife's name is Tracy at the last moment? We don't know. Okay, so that's a mystery. And that would be a nice mystery cleared up. Why did he say Margaret? Oh, well, maybe Cheryl could ask, ask this unnamed husband why he said Margaret at the end, if that's really what he did say. So that's really reaching. Uh, white roses. She's still living for you. And what's this about Mexico or Acapulco? And have you been there? Okay, that is a vacation spot, Acapulco, Mexico. They're very very tourist oriented. Uh, lots of people visit them in their lifetime and or want to visit them in their lifetime. And so Tracy, who's a motivated sitter, she badly, badly wants to make this fit. Whatever Cheryl's saying, she wants to make it fit. And she's going to do it come hell or high water. She says, oh, I want to go see the clear blue water, which could be Acapulco I, or other places. And so Cheryl's kind of like, well, okay, maybe you should go kind of feel to it. She goes, well, we've been thinking about it, planning, maybe doing that, my cousin. And she's looking at the other woman in the room with her. And the earrings, he loves it when you wear his earrings. And then she added that he gave you when you present yourself and, and you want to show, well, I don't know if he needs to be saying you know, is it helpful for her to say that every time you put on the earrings he gave you, he's happy about it? it? I think Tracy, and this is my opinion, of course, and I'm not a therapist, but that Tracy should feel good about wearing the earrings he gave her because he remembers her him. It's her way of saying, I remember he gave me these earrings and I remember the occasion he gave me these earrings and I remember that and I feel good about that. That's a wonderful feeling. But not that I'm wearing them so that this person can see me wearing them. I don't know if you understand the difference, but I, I think it's it's subtle, but it's it's about her. She should be living for herself. She should look introspectively about how to have her best life, living for herself. She, she may uh, have another, there's other people who could be in her life. She could find other passions or other people to have relationships with that could be out there for her. But it feels like Cheryl's not allowing that to happen. Um, that um, even if he was to give her permission, which is like, really? He's giving you permission? But this idea of soulmates and that, I mean, I get it that Cheryl's trying to, to, manipulate this woman's emotions in this time and isn't really thinking about in the future but it felt very much like uh tracy's done she's just going to have to stay in, in stasis until she finally dies because um the love of her life is gone and everything should probably be the same and she's just supposed to wait until it's her time to go and that no other loves no other uh, shoes under the bed, just his, and that's it.
and Tracy's having to learn how to live on her own a little bit more, you know, do the bills, do the yard work or whatever she has to do because of, he had taken on so much responsibility for her in life because she says he really took care of me. This last little bit with dolphins or dolphin energy. What the hell? I mean, come on, really? Cheryl, I mean, are you trying to sell books or something? Or is there dolphin energy soap bars or something you're trying to hand sanitize? Her? I mean, what are you doing? Dolphin energy or dolphins? Dolphins, look at that. They're not the kindest animals. They're not the sweet little things you see on TV. These are these are pretty vicious animals. So I, I don't I don't know. That was flippant. Get it? Get it? Flip it. Dolphins, flip it. You had to be there. So in this reading, which I think is the last we're going to look at with Cheryl, um, reading Tracy. Uh, there really wasn't much there either. Again, nobody's named. Uh, cause of death is not named. She kind of infers that it's something that was a long illness where he lost a lot of weight. Um, you could see his picture over Tracy's shoulder and at times. And it was, um, um, I don't think it was a very healthy reading for this Tracy person, as I keep saying. Do you guys see anything else? What did you guys find? Did you, what, what notes did you take? How did you feel about this reading? Was it helpful in any kind of way to Tracy, who's obviously in really an emotional state? Um, I, I'm really interested in your feedback on this. So if you, if you would be kind enough to give it to me, I'm, I'm open to um, hearing it because I really would like to know what you think. You know, I'm not a therapist. I'm not, uh, I'm I'm definitely not the person to go to for advice on these kinds of things. I'm just telling you my impressions of what I think, which is, um, and take it for what it's worth. I'm not actually speaking to Tracy right now. I'm talking to you guys about what you think. So Santa is still not here. So it's not quite midnight. So I think we can get the last video in tonight. Hope you guys enjoy these as well. Enjoy is kind of a funny word. I hope you learned something from them. I sure, I sure do.